But there's two other reports that we can look at as well, the progress report and the plan report. If we look at the progress report right now, it's not going to show us a whole lot, and I'll explain why in a second. So right now we can see it looks kind of vacant. What we need to do is we need to fill in the start and completion dates. Because these fields here, these columns are blank, we don't have a good idea of what the progress should have been. And so to complete these fields, we're going to go back to the Manage tab. And over on the right-hand side, we're going to fill in the estimated start and the estimated completion dates. So let's do that now. So what we'll do is for each of our phases at the very least, we're going to fill in a beginning and an end date that we anticipate that phase lasting through. So for example, this Boise field phase, let's say we think it's going to, we think it was supposed to start last Monday and it's going to go for about three weeks. So it's going to go to about the 30th. And we'll do the same thing for the Boise asphalt phase. Say this one was only going to last about two weeks. Concrete, it's not going to start until this Friday. Oops, I accidentally entered it on the resource line. So it's not going to start until this Friday, and it's going to go until the 4th of May. There's no equipment, so we can skip that one. On the expenses, it has a similar timeline to the uh, equip to the concrete. We can also type in the date if we don't want to pick from the list. But if we're not comfortable doing that, we can simply select the drop-down and pick. So subcontractor, we don't have any subcontractors, but the drilling, the drilling we're going to start on Wednesday, and it's going to last about a week. So now that we have all of those phase dates in here, we can save this. We can go back to the progress tab. And so now it's going to chart out what the contract should look like. And so this, this legend here is indicating what our contract spent is going to be from beginning to end. And so if we go back to the Manage tab and enter a percent complete for the work that we've done so far, like let's say we think we're about 20% done with the Boise field phase, We'll enter that there, and it'll automatically complete our percent complete date for us. If we sum, if we want to sum up based on the total contract what we're what we're done with, we can click this percent button, and it'll figure out the math for us. Once we've done all that, we'll click save. Let's go back to the progress tab one more time. Great. So now it's marked our reported percent complete. And so now we can see, based on what we reported com percent complete, only about $1,000 done, when we anticipated being closer to about $7,000 done. And then over here on the left, we see our beginning and end dates for all of the phases that were previously blank. And down below, we're going to see the major deadlines and how much of the contract we thought we would have completed by that point. And then it's comparing what we're reporting percent complete. We've only reported about $1,000 of work done, or about 7% overall. And so it's marking those three columns for us. So this is a good chart to look at where you thought you would be in the project based on your starting completion dates with where you actually are. But in, or, in order to drive this report, we have to fill in three columns. We have to fill in the start and the completion dates. And we have to also have to fill in our reported percent complete here in the reported percent complete column. Now, if any of these fields aren't showing, we can add them through the customize list. So we click customize. And then we're going to click manage. And then these fields will be under the reported percent complete and the dates field. 
So we have all of these checked to show them, but if these are unchecked for you, make sure that you've checked these, and then click OK, and you'll have access to them. So the third report we're going to look at is our plan. So this plan tab is a good printout to compare, to, to give to your client, to keep in the file. This, this is basically your whole entire fee estimate. And it's, it's, it's essentially a mirror image of your Manage tab, but this tab can be easily printed or exported to a PDF or Excel if you need to do further derivations. So I hope this, I hope this um, section has been useful. As I mentioned, the most frequently used report that we see is definitely the snapshot report. People like to compare their current contract with their current spent. And then it's great that they can drill right into and see where the spending is occurring. As people enter their timesheets, the, these fields are going are gonna to complete for you. And then the second most handy report is definitely this progress tab. This, this tab is great at comparing where you thought you would be with where you actually are. The only necessary fields are you have to know what your beginning and end dates were going to be. And you have to estimate how far along in the project you are. But once you've done those three things, you can drive this progress report. And then lastly, we looked at the plan tab. This plan tab is a great tool. After you've done the estimating portion, you can print it out or you can send it to your client and illustrate to them, this is what I think we're going to use, and then they can give you feedback based on that. Obviously, if you're unsure about any of these reports, please get in touch with your manager, and I hope this was helpful. Thank you very much.